Hey everyone, Felix from Nintendo Life here, and today we're here to look at some tips and tricks to help you improve your game in Splatoon 3, because we know a lot of people will be coming over from Splatoon 2, and there will of course also be some tips for you guys, but there's also, you know, tips and tricks for people who have just not played Splatoon before. So um, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. The first thing is that if you're new to this game, play the single player campaign because it just teaches you a lot of the basics, it forces you to use a lot of weapons that you might never have considered using and it's just a super fun, well it, I wouldn't say a tutorial but some places act a bit like it, like there are some levels where you have to snipe using the certain sniper or you can only use a certain amount of ink so you need to learn about ink preservations and all that stuff. And if you are experienced there's still a lot of fun to be had in the single player so yeah, just jump into the single player, it's just a super fun experience. The second tip is that this game offers two methods of controlling your inkling or octoling, and that is with your stick or with motion controls. And if you're able to, you should switch over to motion controls. It might be daunting at first, and if you don't like motion controls or just are used to the stick, it's just really hard to get used to, but your game will improve so much. It's just your accuracy for like aiming opponents is so high using the gyroscope in your controllers. And what I did is that I switched it up to maximum sensitivity because I like to move as little as possible to be able to like get around as much as possible from my view angle. I don't know if that explained it properly. But that can of course be too much with certain weapons. And luckily in Splatoon 3 you can assign certain sensitivity options to certain weapons. Like you can have five different loadouts and it could be that you really like sniping with a low sensitivity so you could have a loadout with, you know, a sniper and then a low sensitivity. All in all, just switch to motion controls if you're able to. The third tip might be obvious, but ink your base. It cannot be stressed how many people just forget to do this and it's it's really important because I've had matches where the opposing team had much more ink in our area but because they forgot to ink their base we won the match. And that actually leads perfectly into the fourth tip is that let's say you really want to ink that base but the enemy is just pushing on and you don't want them to advance too far so use your secondaries, you know, your fizzy bombs, sprinklers, whatever, just throw it at an uninked area in your base and that way you still get to push towards your enemy but still ink a bit of your base. So, you know, it's a win-win. The fifth tip is that recon mode is a great way to familiarize yourself with the new stages but also the different modes, you know, splat zones, tower control, clan blitz, rainmaker. If you're new to this and thinking, what is he talking about? Well, I'll get into some tips about those modes later, but just know that they're there. You run around just by yourself in this recon mode, but then you can like explore freely what the different stages do, what some good positions to take when the enemy is approaching, or in the different modes, you can maybe find a good route, for example the Rainmaker, and see how the new checkpoint system works, because now instead of just going directly with your Rainmaker, you have to go to one of two checkpoints and it just works a little bit differently so if you're coming from Splatoon 2 and just, you know, are not sure how things quite work, go into recon mode, it's gonna be a very good friend of yours. The sixth tip is just when you respawn, check on the map real quick which places need to be inked, which places are the enemy pushing and, you know, go there and help out the team as much as you can, especially when starting this game, at least in my instance, I just kind of forgot that there was even a map, I didn't use it at all, but when I started using it, it just really helped like having a better understanding of how the game was going and where I needed to go, so just remember to use your map and when respawning is a great opportunity to do so. And the next tip is just remember to use the two new moves that are introduced here in Splatoon 3, you know, the Squid Surge and the Squid Roll. When I played the demo Splatfest, I totally forgot to use these, and it was only when I started playing the single player and, you know, they really told you how to use these that it just kind of clicked. The Squid Surge can be a bit hard to understand at first, but when you get the hang of it, you just hold down the B button and then when you see your squid come out of the ink, you just, you know, go up, you don't have to do anything, and if you wait long enough and it does a little then, well, it goes even faster and you like, throw back, yeah. And the second move is, well, the squid roll. And this is like, if you're going in one direction, then you can like flick the stick and jump and then you like, Foop! 
And when you do this, you also have some invincibility frames, which is just, you know, it's always a win. And a thing the game doesn't really tell you is that you can squid roll off walls. Like, you're going up a wall and then suddenly you're back on the ground. It can be you know, not the quickest way to do it, but it's certainly nice to have and it just adds even more variety to your moveset. The eighth tip is that you don't always need to go into action. It's okay to just sometimes sit still, dive into the ink and refill your ink tank, go around and spray some areas that aren't as crowded to charge your special before going into action. And if the action gets too heavy, well, don't be afraid to retreat. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And sometimes it can even be more beneficial because it will just take more time for you to respawn and get back to that point than if you just would retreat. So don't be afraid to be defensive, that's just all I'm saying. And the ninth tip actually correlates a lot with the eighth, and that is like if you're not confident in the one-on-ones, because in the start that can be very daunting and a bit hard, it's okay to stay close to your teammates and go out battling together. And like if you just respawned and you know your friend is just on the way, it's okay to just wait on them so you can go together. Because you know, two sets of eyes are better than one. And then you can just go out spatting together and win that game. Hopefully. <laughs> the next tip is, don't just choose your weapon based on the weapon itself, secondaries and even specials really shouldn't be overlooked. Let's start with looking at the specials, because they will drastically change how your like start of play will take place. Let's say you have the newly introduced tactic cooler, well you place it and then all of the teammates can grab a drink and then they're really fast squidding around and if they die with the effect still taking place, well that's an instant revive. You also have the reef slide when you like slide in on a shark and make a big explosion or the ink back where you can suck up enemies ink and then shoot it back at them. There's a lot of specials that all do very different things and before we move on let's also talk a bit about the sub weapons. For example the fizzy bomb. If you just throw it like a regular bomb just you know press the button it does a little explosion nothing very exciting. But if you hold down the bottom, you will start shaking that bomb and it will do a little click so it will explode two times. And if you hold down the button even more, it will do another click. So when you throw that, it will explode three times. So it's like you can just use it as a small bomb in needy situations, but if you can see you have a bit more time, you can hold it down and then you get more explosions out of it. But you also have stuff like a burst bomb, suction bomb, torpedo or ink mine. There's a lot of these and while they don't affect as much as, you know, the specials, it's still really important to look at when you choose your weapon. Staying on the topic of weapons, let's say you want to try out these weapons before you use your well-earned Sheldon licenses. Well, with just a button press when you're in the weapon shop, if you press Y, you get into like a testing range with that set weapon, so you can try it out and see how the different specials work, how the secondaries work, but then you can also see the range of your weapons and there's even small targets you can shoot at and it displays the amount of damage it does. It's a great way to decide which weapons you want to get, and even if you don't want to get it, just to like get an understanding of what the different types of weapon does. The 12th tip is that super jump well, it's not always the best option. Jumping to a teammate in combat will most likely than not result in you dying. So like, have a good view and the map and look, does this look safe? Can I jump there? Is there any enemies nearby? Because if they are, they can just actually see where you land and well, that can really only be prevented with using an item on your clothes, and I'll talk about clothes in a bit. And similarly, if a teammate jumps to you, just do everything in your power to keep them safe, because they, as I said many times now, very vulnerable when doing so. So if you've gone into turf war battles, you might have seen Merch, and Merch is a dude who sits outside of like the lobby. Merch can change the ability on your gear. Now I will not go into full detail because the game does a good job in explaining, but simplifying it, Merch can change the abilities on your clothes and make it even more tailored for your needs, you know, giving it certain buffs that will help you win in combat. And talking about buffs, you can also buff yourself with nice little bonuses with food. And you find this little cantina inside the training area just before entering a match. You have to have certain tickets to redeem certain food, but this food will just up, let's say, oh, you get double experience for the next 20 matches, and there's even some buffs that affect the whole team. So just check it out because it will help you, you know, level up much faster. And again, the game explains it to you, but I just wanted to mention it in case you missed these things. The 
14th tip is regarding gear, we touched lightly upon it just before, and well, it's important to look fresh, but the abilities are much more important for winning games. If you're new to this game and don't know which abilities you would want, we'd recommend, you know, primary ink saver, enemy ink resistance, and special charge up. Swim speed is also tremendous to get out of danger, and one of my personal favorites is Ninja Squid, which basically when you swim around in ink, it doesn't splash around. You can still see a little bit where you're going, but it's really good for sneaking up on enemies, and I just love surprising my opponents with it. So, don't always think how cool things look, because when you get into this game, that might be your mindset of it all. Look what the gear actually does before equipping it, and if you really want certain pieces of clothes, but they don't have the abilities you just want, well, go talk to Merch, as we talked about just before, and he can help you while well, getting rid of some abilities and replacing them with others. And staying on the topic of clothing and abilities, it's important to spread these abilities out. And whilst, yes, you can stack these, it varies how much they actually help when they're stacked. What you want to know is that the big ones on the clothing are the ones that help the most, and then you have up to three sub slots that, you know, they don't help as much as the big one, but they can still help quite a bit. Also, keep in mind, if you even need some of these buffs, it could be that you have a quick respawn, but this is only really useful if you don't get any splats between dying. Let's say you're a person that really likes getting those splats, well, then this won't really help, but let's say you are like a support, that you just go around and inking and help the other characters to get splats, then when you get splatted, you will respawn faster. So just keep that in mind when you're like planning out which abilities to equip. This next tip is, well, maybe one of the most important on the list, and that is ink over enemy ink when possible instead of uninked grounds. And why is this? Well, you're getting to certain points for inking uninked grounds, but when you ink over enemy ink, well, not only do you get points, but you also take points away from your enemy. So essentially, it's double points. It's very easy to not think about this and just go and in inking uninked areas because you think, oh, well, this is good for my team. And well, yes, it is good. Don't get me wrong. It is just as important to ink enemy ink because that just it gives you points and takes points away from your enemy and that can in the end decide if you win or lose a match. The next tip, well it can't be applied to everyone, but if you can, play together with friends instead of randoms. It will give you a broader understanding of everything that's going on in the match if you hop on a Discord call and then you can like do callouts and talk tactics. When I found some friends that I could play with, my enjoyment for this game just rose so much higher because while playing with randoms, well, yes, it can be fun, playing with friends is just so much more enjoyable, especially if you can like fill out a full team of four players. And it's even better if the persons you play with are better than you because then they can tell, oh, you should do this instead of that, you know, kind of mentor you. If you're new to this game and have any friends that play Splatoon, well, just ask them if they want to help you out. Maybe, you know, teach you a few tricks up their sleeves. It can help tremendously and it helped me become so much better at this game so much faster. I know, again, it's not everyone who has the ability to play with friends. I, for example, didn't have anyone to play Splatoon 2 with, so well, I know how it feels. And, you know, no worries if you can't. It's still a very enjoyable game. But if you have the ability to, just, you know, ask your friends to play with you. It's... Yeah, I'm just gonna go on to the next tip. <laughs> and staying on the topic of, you know, having friends that play Splatoon, if you want a head start and you don't have Splatoon 2, maybe you can ask a friend out if you can just borrow their game. And if you hop in the cartridge and get past the tutorial of Splatoon 2, then when you launch Splatoon 3 for the first time, you can import save data and, you know, it will grant you a couple of different things, but most importantly, it will give you golden Sheldon licenses. And these can be used to get weapons, well, before they are even unlocked. And that's super helpful if you just have one weapon that you really want to get, but you can't because you need to level up and it will take a long time to get there. So if you can, well, just ask that friend out. I'm sure they don't mind, you know, lending that game since, well, Splatoon 3 is out. They're probably playing that, they're not playing Splatoon 2. Well, maybe they are. I won't judge you if you are. Let's talk about tips for Anarchy Battles, which was before known as Ranked Battles. So let's start with a tip for one of the four modes, Splat Zones. Now, the game tells you fairly well how Splat Zones work, but once you successfully capture the zone of an enemy, the enemy gets, you know, a penalty timer on top, so when they take back the zone, if they take back the zone, 
they have to go through that penalty before they can resume from where they left off. And if the enemy is working through that penalty timer, don't you don't need to rush in. You can just take your time, get your specials up, get your ink ready, and then rush in together when the whole team is ready and take over that zone and win the match. Let's move on for tip in tower controls. I'm sure a lot of people know this, but the tower moves faster the more players are on it. But this can actually be a double-edged sword because let's say you're a lot of players up on this tiny platform you're very easily exposed to you know suction bombs blasters and just make sure when you do this that most of the other team are not present you know you've inked them down because then you can get some good distance down and even if there are other players around it's a good tactic let's say if you want to reach that checkpoint to just you know all jump on it and reach that checkpoint yeah it's just Easy to overlook and it can help tremendously for winning matches in this mode. And a little bonus tip for tower control is just sometimes just relax, sit back and when you ride that tower, listen to this beautiful little jingle. Yeah. Now let's move on for some tips for Rainmaker. The shoe exclusive ability Ink Shredder is invaluable in this mode because it does so that you can pop the Rainmaker much quicker and maybe catch the opposition off guard and get a splatter to you from that explosion. It's also just really good to quickly grab the Rainmaker. So if you're big on Rainmaker, just look a bit into that ability so you can up your game just that tiny little bit. And a second tip for Rainmaker is that it can be really frustrating when you're going along paths that can't be ink. First and foremost, you're just really slow walking with the Rainmaker and there's no ink to swim in. So what do you do? Well, let's say you're going up an uninkable path, then you can actually do small shots in the opposite direction and the recoil will actually be faster than walking itself. It can be really dangerous because you're exposing your back with the Rainmaker so enemies can very easily hit you, but let's say you just you need to be just that little bit quicker up this uninkable path, well, shooting in the opposite direction will do just the trick. And now we're moving on to tips for the last mode in this anarchy battle section of the video, and that is of course Clam Blitz. The first tip I have for you here is if you have the Super Clam, don't just rush in by yourself. Wait for your teammates to have grabbed at least a few clams, and then when you go there and, you know, throw the Super Clam and open the basket, then they can also, like, shoot in and get a lot of points that, you know, we wouldn't have gotten if I would just have rushed in by myself. And a second tip for clam blitz is that don't always keep all the clams to yourself, because you can actually see how many clams your teammates has. And with a small button press on the A button, you can actually toss those clams to, you know, your teammates. And it's a great way to just move clams around the map and, in the end, making a super clam. And that actually leads perfectly into the last tip about clam blitz, and that is don't always be too eager to get a super clam, because not only can the opposing team see where that super clam is, but it's much, much uh, smarter to, you know, wait and see. Maybe your teammate only has nine clams and is near the goal. Then you throw that last clam to him so he can open and then you get all those sweet, sweet points. Just be wary of when to get the super clam and get it at the right time. Yeah. And now going from anarchy battle tips, let's move on to salmon run tips. Because we have a few bit of tips here that will make you an exceptional player pun intended. So a really useful tip is a little visual indicator that shows you where the tides are going to be, because before starting each round, you get like a small animation behind that shows how high the tide will be, and I realized this way too late, and it was just like this, oh, this is how you tell where the tides are going to be. It might be very obvious to many people, but for me, it was just such a mind-blowing experience to figure out this is how it works, and I just hope that a lot of other people can get some use out of this tip. The next tip is don't just burn through all your specials in wave 1. You want to save these for at least wave 2 or wave 3, because things will get tougher the longer you go on. And you will get an extra special if you get the bonus King Salmonid, but those are far and few in between, so just be wary of your specials because they can really come in clutch and potentially saving the entire game. This tip is something to do with the newly introduced, you know, egg throwing mechanic, and that is when you throw an egg, you actually generate a little bit of splash around you, potentially taking out some small salmonids from behind in the process. It's a small little thing, but it can really come in use if you use it at the right time, like 
most small tips can. The next tip is remember to use the this way emote when, for example, there's a boss salmonid coming in or if there's some golden eggs that are about to be stolen by some other salmonids. Of course, this can also be applied when you play in, you know, regular turf battles because maybe you want this teammate to come over here, then you can just, you know, also use that. That's what they're there for. But we feel that it especially comes in hand in Salmon Run. And the last tip for Salmon Run is just remember to be polite. When you get revived, give them a little booyah and you might get one back. And when you eventually win those rounds, squid bagging together as a team is even more polite. And that was all the Salmon Run tips, so I want to move on to... Well, would you look at that? It's the last tip of this video, and it's a very broad tip, but it's still very important. If you feel that you're not very good in this game, well, practice makes perfect. Well, maybe not perfect, but at least better. Practice makes better. Yeah, I like the sound of that. If you want to get really good at a special weapon, well, just use that weapon a lot. And if it isn't waking out, well, don't be afraid to drop it and just choose another weapon. The same goes for the specials and the secondaries. And when I say practice, I don't mean like going to training area and just sit there shooting at targets. Well, yes, that can be beneficial, but just play the game. You get so much experience of just playing the game and you get better over time the more you play. If you feel that you've plateaued a bit and I don't feel like I'm getting any better, well, Luckily, Splatoon 3 lets you look at the replays of your matches, so you can look at what you're doing there and it's much easier to spot mistakes you're doing in replays. Or maybe you can get a friend in to, you know, just tell you what you're doing wrong and what you can improve on. That at least, for me, helped me improve so much my game. Yeah, just play the game and you will get better eventually. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the 30 plus Splatoon 3 tips I had for you today. If you like this video, why don't you go over and ink that subscribe button 30 plus times. That's a lot of inking. And don't forget to check out our website nintendolife.com for all sorts of Nintendo related content. Were any of these tips helpful? Well, let us know down in the comments below and while you're down there, type some of your own tips that I maybe just overlooked because then people going down there might find some actual game changes that will help them become the best of the best. But that was everything from me. Stay safe, play some Splatoon 3, Felix from Nintendo Life, out. Oh.